Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the Reasonably Fine Art Talk. Today, yeah. I actually have my cat, Charbonneau, sitting directly in front of me. So if things go galley west in a minute, you'll know why. But anyway, mm -hmm. it's a joy to have you with us. And it's a joy to have with us today two of my favorite people uh, from the Avalon Foundation in Eastern Maryland, uh, Jess and Al. Jess Bellis and Al Pond, welcome, you guys. Hey, it's so it, good to see you and the cat as well. Is it is it super cold down there? You're both wearing hats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you you started it with your hat. Um, no, we felt yeah like we were out of place without a hat on since you had had your hat on. And we just wanted so. to prove to people that plenary is not plenary Easton is not always so hot, but exactly. we actually get cold and cozy right. here too. No. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Does it get below 104 degrees in, in, in Maryland ever? No, no, Charlie, we have northern winters and southern summers, and they both last about two weeks. And ah. the rest of the time, it's really nice. But it happens that Plenary Easton is one of the, in those two weeks that, yeah, we get the really, you know, hot mm -hmm. sum, summer weather. Now, I, have, I heard one time anecdotally that part of the reason that Plenary Easton is scheduled for that period in July is because precisely because it is so hot and unpleasant there that the Chamber of Commerce was looking for some way of somehow getting people to come there during that time. Is there any truth to well, that? I'm just I'm just glad that's the rumor that you heard, not the one that we're simply masochistic and we yeah. like to torture the artist. I, I like that that's the rumor that you heard. No, it, it, there's actually kind of a, a handful of reasons, but um, part of it certainly when when I started Plenary Easton, yeah, however many sixteen years ago, yeah, I was actually the economic development manager for the town of Easton, and so yes, the part of it was about. Yeah, you know, bringing lively activity during a time that was yeah you know, had capacity. Yeah, you know, because if we brought thousands of people into Easton in a time that where the restaurants were already busy, what are you really doing? You're not really helping anybody. Right. So we did it at that time in part because of that. But the other reason why it's that specifically because there are other sort of yeah you know, less lively times during the 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 year. The reason why it's in yeah you know, late July is that when it gets really, really hot, you tend not to have long-term periods of rain. Uh-huh. So it's the driest time of year. Interesting. You know, you'll get a squall that blows through and it takes 20 minutes, but you don't get days and days of rain. And we figured that if we're going to try and have an outdoor art festival, then, right. yeah, we shoot for a spot when you could actually be outdoors. And now that Al has <laughs> disclosed that, the weather gods will <laughs> yeah, say, right. oh, 2021, yeah, yeah. what do we have in store now, for you? Now that we broke the sky, there are consequences, and I'm sure it'll, it's all going to be different. But, <laughs> right. Um, now, yeah, so for folks who may not be familiar uh, with Plein Air East, and why don't you guys give just kind of a quick overview of the idea behind it, what it is, uh, what sets it apart from some of the other events like that, what your hopes and dreams have been. And then we're going to move on to what 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 the universe has done to those hopes and dreams. Sure. <laughs> I like the story arc that you're building here. Um, well, Plenar Easton, I believe that this year will be our 17th it year. Will be. Um, it is the largest outdoor painting competition in the United States. It's a juried competition every year with one jurist and one judge that, that rotates new every year. We don't really tend to repeat. Um, so anybody can apply with three images. Um, we get applications from all over the world and 58 artists are chosen to travel to Talbot County, Why Maryland. 58? And Why 58? It's um, a great, there's yeah, a great answer so, for that one. Um, the wall space at the Academy Art Museum where we have the competition show is yeah such that you can fit 58 artists double hung so yeah no <laughs> i just want to jump in there and say ladies and gentlemen that will give you an idea of how well organized this event is they have figured out what their capacity is they don't try to mess with that they don't try to mess by moving scooching in a little bit more and getting more in there or anything 
This is no. a very, very well organized event. Continue then, please. Um, well, thank you. So people travel from all over the United States. They come to paint for a grueling week uh, here in Talbot County, Maryland, which is on Maryland's eastern shore. So there's a lot of beautiful waterfront and agricultural um, properties. We're well located, you know, a couple hours from the DC metro area, a couple hours from Philly, not too far from New York City. Um, People come here and paint and compete for lots of prizes and accolades and glory. Um, glory. <laughs> There's a lot of glory and here. Really and, lot of sales. and really good sales. Now, one of the things that to me has always been interesting is that many of the plein air uh, or most of the plein air events that I have participated in, the organizations that, that put on these events are specifically of painting, either painting groups or painting organizations, or it's a group that exists solely to put on the event. For you guys, it is all, it is either always been or has become a fundraiser for the Avalon, the, the larger Avalon Foundation. Is that correct? And um, I guess we have a little bit of a free, I'm gonna, so We don't actually, we don't actually make uh oh, um, we don't actually look at as a um, as a fundraiser. Yeah, we take in a certain amount of money because of the you know, sponsors and the art sales and etc. But our organization would be so much smaller if we didn't do Plenary Easton. It really just pays for itself. But what really? it does is gives us. It, if you add in the labor and overhead to it, it it basically allows us to have a much deeper bench, yeah, at the Avalon than we would if we were just doing the the theater stuff. And so mm -hmm. yeah, that gives the organization a level of capacity, and it also has a really important function just in a sort of cash flow standpoint, right. which is that yeah, our theater operations really are sort of a September through June time period. And it used to be for the organization before the plein air became a, a big thing that yeah, the summer was a really cash strapped time period. And this we sort of filled in that area. So we, we never are in a place where yeah, we have that big dip and are thinking about yeah, how are we going to pay the bills or whatever. No, I guess, so, I guess I would just like say it a little bit more specifically that the mission of the Avalon Foundation, which is the organization that employs Al and I that produces Plein Air Easton, its mission really is about community building. And the, the tool that the Avalon Foundation uses to build community is art. So while, you know, Charlie has been a competing artist for years at Plein Air Easton, he's been juried in a number of times and traveled here to paint, you know, it, for us, the event isn't actually all about the competition. It's about all the education that we're providing to our community members. It's about our local color exhibition. It is about the work that we do with the, the kids. connections that are made so, between people. You know, I mean, again, yeah, um, Charlie introduced us as friends, and we are. Yeah, right. and that is actually really important in terms of what we're trying to do is making connections between people that end up having, who knows, but interesting results. Mm -hmm. um, and so, within our community and within the arts community, yeah, that's our that's actually what we're out to do. So in terms of it being a fundraiser, again, what we feel like we can do is run a tight business where we're not losing money on the event, but be able to pour the resources into serving that mission, mission which is, again, to try to reunite and bring the community together. You know, um, we're certainly proud of the event itself. I think we have really great sort of international acclaim at this point for for the event itself and i think we are different charlie because we are event organizers like we love art we we have art mm -hmm. we love artists but you know we like to but, we but like again, rock and let's, roll too let's get back to, you, know, <laughs> you know we let's get back to the bench that we talked about you yeah. know you, you want to understand why plenary easton is as yeah you know, organized as it is it is because all of the people who work at the avalon put on events yeah, we have a hundred, hundred and sixty live music events a year. We right. have, uh, yeah, the farmers market, the Fourth of July. We blow up explosives right say, in July. I'm, also, I'm a really you know, great you know, party like, sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, right. we, all we do is organize events, and so that gives us a, a real advantage in terms of yeah, having the people that can think through those details and understand exactly how everything should work. 
Right. Um, well, and having the deep community connections to be able to have multiple events in different parts of our community, ask different stakeholders to come to the table. Um, you know, it, it's been mm. really fun for 17 years. Yeah, mm. people come to us through some door. Yeah, and it might be that they really love our fireworks event, you know? Right. And then we end up getting you know, engaged with them and introducing them across all these things that we do. And yeah, again, it makes these connections that never would have happened otherwise. Right. And so you've got, you've got a performance, you've got a theater, the Avalon Theater. You've got mm -hmm. a smaller listening room, the Stoltz listening room. We you do. coordinate the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. And you blow things up. Um, those are some of the things that we do. We run the multicultural festival for Talbot, Talbot County. Um, we have a television station, which is the uh, community access television station. And it also covers all of the you know, town and county council meetings. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a you know, sort of, we've actually in this COVID times been very involved in the emergency management system and you know, communicating you know, how everybody should be acting during you know, these times. Yeah, you know, Again, the television station is- We a, do a whole heck of a lot of work with the schools, the local school system yeah. here, um, both in terms of outreach into the schools. Um, we before, before these wacky times, we had a lot of bus-in performances into, into our um, facility. We every do second summer grader camps. through eighth grader in Talbot County gets to go to see performances every year at the Avalon. Got a whole children's yeah. theater troupe that um, works with us um, all year mm -hmm. round. And so, you know, again, it's about trying to build community through the arts. And right. also we've got a lot of new projects up our sleeve too, um, as, as other nonprofits are trying to navigate these really complicated times. Um, I suspect we'll have some other projects coming into our purview as well in, in the right. next several months as everybody sort of um, reassesses the uh, missions of their own organizations. Right. Right. Well, again, to people who may or may not be familiar with uh, Plein Air Easton, one of the things in the artists, in the, the what us painters, when we're comparing notes about events, one of the things that is very appealing about Plein Air Easton is it traditionally has some of the best, I think it has the best sales uh, in the country. Uh, right. You guys have done a fantastic job of uh, building up a collector base um, amongst, you know, it's, it's, it's people who are not necessarily sophisticated art buyers, but have become collectors through the interaction with the artists, through the interaction with the organization. And, and apparently, I hear tell, I was not there in 2020, but I hear tell you guys still had pretty strong sales even during yeah. COVID. We did. Tell we us did. a little bit about how uh, how the event, how you had to change the event in 2020, and how you envision uh, it looking like going forward. Right. Sure. Well, I guess. I mean, I think everybody found themselves in a state of shock in March. I mean, I don't know what your how you felt at the moment when you saw it all kind of slipping through your fingers. But I will certainly never forget when we just knew that we had to sort of stop all of our programming and pack it up and go home. Right. Like, and you know, you work for, you know, I've been with the organization for 17 years and it just feels like all that work. You just don't know what's going to happen next. And it certainly took, um, I think our first sort of phase was all about trying to get all of the emergency funding we possibly could so that we could make sure that we were viable Solvent. to the summer. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, we had a lot of really iterative meetings. And again, I guess if there are people who are watching this and are thinking about how the heck to restart their events or how to modify them um, to, to try to be sustainable through the pandemic, you know, we just started getting on Zoom much like this and talking to collectors and talking to artists right. and just just really spent a whole heck of a lot of time sitting on our porch, um, having these kind of co conversations and asking what is the what is the most important thing? Like, what do we have to do? You know, and 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 just really trying to shake off the, well, we usually do it this way or people expect it to be that way and just say, no, 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 no. Like take the rule book, 
burn it. Take a deep breath. <laughs> just take a deep and, breath and yeah, say. Start from what can we actually do safely? What can you do safely? That, and what really that, matters? That, that actually matters to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that was sort of our starting point. Yeah. For this year. And yeah, the, the thing that we really came to understand is that if you're going to have engage a lot of people, then what you need is to spread them out both over space, which everybody's aware of the six feet, all that, but also over time so that you're getting a lot of people engaged in the activity, but they're not doing it all at the same moment or in the same place necessarily. So, you know? so a clear, like a, you know? an example of that would be typically our event sort of moves throughout the county. So we might have one day that celebrates the little town of Oxford and another day that really highlights the working waterfront on Tillman Island and, and, and brings crowds together on that one day in that one location as we move across the, the county. And this year, what we really did was sort of shatter that and have tiny events in so many different places that no person could be at all of them at the same time. And so we were forcing our constituency that likes to gather together in one big group to have to pick and choose and say, okay, I'm going to go to Oxford today and I'll do the event in Tillman tomorrow. So we had a lot of small simultaneous events instead of having so we took events the, happen at the yeah, same time. The 37 artists that participated this year and we basically said, okay, you're going to be in Tillman this day. And then the next day you're going to be in St. Michael's and the next day you're going to be in Oxford. And we had yeah, people and the artists in all of those locations every single day, but yeah, fewer artists, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah and there, uh, therefore fewer collectors in those same places. And that gave us the, the ability to really spread everybody mm -hmm. out in, you know, yeah, so that was one of the the, the and ways we that we handled about it. Priorities, and we identified really early on. And again, it, it's it's not like the answer that anybody wants to hear necessarily. But the most important thing, or one of the most important things that came out of those conversations, was just how important it was that we cater to those specific collectors and donors that have been so good to us. Right. So you know, you might not be able to serve everybody this year, but like who. Who do you need to serve this year? Like we needed to serve our top um, collectors and donors. And so we typically have a large event every year that's sort of like a big wedding without a bride and groom. It's on like a big flashy property and we have a tent and a band and a sit down dinner and um, artists paint all day on these beautiful properties. And it's it's become a, a real um a, a real uh, an event that everyone looks forward to. And this year, the way we did it is instead of it being on one property, we had it traverse many properties and right. it became a drive so, around tour. So we had six different estates and this is the, the challenge. We had to find places where there, where there was interesting stuff to paint, obviously. Yeah. And they had to be in reasonable driving proximity to one another. And they needed to have different means of ingress and egress so that you could have the traffic flow going yeah, and not having people cross paths the whole way. And by doing this, instead of having 300 people under a tent, which obviously would be yeah, okay. a super spreader event, no. yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, we had the same number of people spread over all of these you know, properties. And at any given property, there were a handful of artists painting in very picturesque locations. And you could stop and get out of your car and wear if your you, mask If you and wanted walk around. to, or those people yeah. who were really practicing and, social distancing could stay in their cars and, and just actually drive, it. drive through and see the paintings right. hung on boards that we put on either side of their car so they never had to get out. And at the end, we had that meal that they expect in a cooler bag that was popped right, right into their trunk with the wine right. so that they could come home and then in a live stream way, see the artwork that was right. um, created, you know, from the comfort of their own home. And the that was, work. that was right. an event that we were able to execute. Like we knew we would be able to pull it off in everything but a full lockdown. So even though the restrictions were a little bit looser than we thought they might be when we got to have to be in July, we were able to have that really big event that was important for serving our donors mm -hmm. at that time. I know there was a question that popped so, up on the screen and I didn't have a chance to uh -oh. read it. It no, was, oh, there it is. Lockdowns open up events to a global audience. Do you see this maintained now going forward as part of the event? What was your, did you, did you, did you do a lot of, I know you've 
been doing a lot of social media stuff in years past. Mm -hmm. how, did that, sure. how did you grow that and how will it grow going forward? Well, again, because we have that television station. I know, we, we were, were sort really of live able... streaming. You were on a live streamed TV show two years ago when we were there. Mm -hmm. And right. we've been doing a lot of podcasts and live streaming. We certainly want to continue to, to do that. Um, and, you know, I guess I hope that, that through the media that we've been doing, we continue to grow that big audience. But mostly we want, people, yeah, so. <laughs> we want people to travel to, to Talbot County. We want to to be that economic stimulus when it's safe to do so. We want artists to apply to participate, but we also think it's a great week to just come and spend on the Eastern shore of Maryland and explore, especially if you are an art lover um, or you're somebody who aspires to, to participate in events like this. We have a lot of opportunities in a normal year for anybody to come and paint and learn and connect. And so, you know, you talk about aspirations, Charlie, you know, I wanna continue to be a place where people come to, to, to learn and grow and, and connect around plein air painting. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, how can we keep in, engaging that global audience? We're never going to stop the live streaming stuff we're, we've, we've done. We were doing it before the pandemic, but what do we really want? We want to know you. We want you to come to Easton and check out our event. We want you to come buy yeah. Charlie's artwork. Yeah, the, the um, live that's what we want. It is really about engaging people and getting them excited enough that they actually come and participate. Mm -hmm in person because the in-person experience is just so much better. Right. Well, two things I'd like to say addressed to that. One, I, I think a lot of the audience for my little thing is uh, our, our painters who are becoming more serious about their practice. Mm -hmm. uh, and you guys do both, if you are a regional painter, you do the regional artists show that is concurrent with Mayor Easton. You right. also have uh, in the in the uh, quick draw, which is on Saturday, which is a timed two or three hour event where you paint. Uh, there is the professional category and then there's the open category. Is that correct? Also Actually, the whole dang thing is open, Charlie. Yeah. You can we, all, we, 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 um, we allow anybody with $10 and ambition yeah, to participate in our quick draw, which okay. is an unusual thing. Yeah, it, it, it is, you know, one of the things why we're juried even is that we want that new up and coming person that we've never seen before to come in and blow everybody's socks off. Mm -hmm. And so we try to create opportunities where, you know, it's not the, the old boys club, you know, to get into the main competition. It's not the old boys club to be in our, in our, you know, in our you know, quick draw. Now, from a practical standpoint, who wins the big prizes in the quick draw mostly? It's, <laughs> it, it tends, it's, it tends yeah. to be competition painters or alumni just because right. they are the professional ones. But what have we had? I'm going to use the word major award, which sounds like right. very Christmas story or something. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we certainly have had people who are not participating in the um, the big competition itself win major awards at, at, at Quick Absolutely. Drop. Absolutely. You know, um, it happens. And, you but, know, and often those people we start seeing, you know, get into the, the main event over time, too. I mean, it, but we have. You know, we have workshops during that week. We have a lot of free demos. And most of the educational content that we have during Plenary Easton is free and open to the public. So, um, I mean, that was another thing that just had to really change this year is we did a lot more of the stuff live streaming because we just couldn't have people gathered in a room. We had a couple of um, demos that we hosted in Oxford and in Tel on Tillman Island that were out outdoors limited and paid, capacity limited and capacity. And outdoors and speed, um, yeah, just so because forth, yeah. we had to sort of sort of pivot to make sure we didn't have big crowds coming together. But you know, what do we want in the future? We want big crowds again. <laughs> right. Well, what do you see? What's what's your crystal ball saying is going to happen in 2021? Um, yeah, right. <laughs> I know. I um, wish we had all the answers for everybody. You know, it really comes down to how, you know, how quickly the vaccine gets out there and people, you know, people's you know, willingness to you know, get vaccinated. Yeah. You know, that's going to turn the whole story. I mean, it's, it's everybody's story, you know, not just ours, but, um, and, you know, who knows, who knows how quickly that will all happen. Um, we are hopeful 
that yeah we will have an event that is yeah more like a normal event than what we did last year but and i don't believe that we will have our typical big plenary easton again in 2021 i mean i'm not wildly optimistic that it will feel like it has in years past and i think we will have to continue to be creative and and open because safety is our number one priority we certainly don't want anybody coming you know. in and, and getting getting sicker or getting yeah. someone else sick. So, you know, I, the good news about plein air is that it is outdoors where I think everybody feels safer and it is safer. And so I, I think we're already having conversations about how much, how much more of our event could be outdoors with more people. But, um, you know, I, I can guarantee you that we're going to do something because we were able to pull something off in 2020. And again, right. you, you, you mentioned and it, Charlie, we were just like really, really, overwhelmed by um, the collectors that came out and supported the artists who, who who traveled and the level of engagement that we have. I mean, I, I guess that's my optimism for artists that might be watching, like who are feeling really like isolated and down right now. Like there are people who have been staring at their walls for a year now and they're sick of some of the stuff they that's on there. <laughs> and, and, I think, <laughs> and I think that they appreciate um, connection more. And I think that plein air painting is a way to really feel that, that, that connection with somebody else um, mm -hmm. and, and to a landscape that you really love. So I'm optimistic about plein air as a, as a movement, yeah. the, the future of, of that and just more people becoming engaged and, and interested and, in, and, in, and in supporting. Well, so, another way that you guys have, uh, are ahead of the curve, as it were, ahead of the curve is that uh, you have, you've, there's been a tradition at Plein Air Easton of uh, a couple of the artists working very large. Uh, it's, it tends to be larger scale than a lot of the uh, mm -hmm. Plein Air events. And I was, I was just thinking about unanticipated consequences of, you know, assuming there's going to be greater social distancing going forward. Probably does make sense to paint bigger if you're at, if, if I'm doing a painting for, with an audience, if doing a 12 by 24, there, you know, what is my view? The, the possible possible number of people who could witness that is right. going to be less than if I'm doing a 24 by 36. Because, you know, right. so, so you probably will be having more big, I, I would think we may be seeing more bigger works. So what's the maximum that you folks allow? <laughs> yeah, um, 36 by 42, I believe. Yeah, is the number. at the academy, but you know, again, 2021 is we'll anybody's. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll have a maybe we'll have a bigger space to be able to have our competition paintings. I don't. I, again, we don't have all of the details out. Right. I think. I think what the the biggest. The biggest obstacle that we're facing at the moment, if we're just like having an honest conversation amongst friends is, you know, we're a juried competition and making sure we've got new blood in there and giving people an opportunity is really a part of what we want to do. And because people, we knew that 2020 was not going to be the same event. You know, we have extended invitations for everybody who got in in 2020 to come and participate in 2021. And I believe that that was the right move, but I have a lot of like, sort of cognitive dissidence about the people who just happened to not get in in 2020, then that's like a two year hiatus that mm -hmm. they're being forced into. Right. And so, you know, how can we create opportunities? Like it goes back to the person who asked about global participation, you know, how can we create opportunities that doesn't water down the experience of people who did get juried in, but maybe allows for an, an extra slot or people who can't come in 2021. I think we're trying to work out how to, to re-engage people who now will have to have that two year pause. And right. so, you know, that's kind of what we're thinking about now because we want to look out for the whole community. Right. Now, so, so are there any things that people can apply to on, on, on your website at present or is that coming? Not, not at this moment. Not right now. Cause again, we're, we're not, not dropping there. a prospectus. We usually would at this time of year, Charlie, but we're not because we really don't know how many slots we might have out there. And again, we had internal conversations. Do you go back to the alternate list? Do you, you know, and again, I, I don't know if people are really ready to say whether they're coming in July. I mean, I don't know if you, I, I think it's, I, I mean, I'm not going to put you on the spot, Charlie, but you certainly are one of those people with an, uh, with an invitation in, in, in 2021. 
If I get the if I get the vaccine, I'm wait, 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 but you but, don't have that date in your calendar yet, do you? <laughs> I yeah, wish. So, <laughs> I wish. You know, um, what we can say is that yeah, last year we really proved that if you do come, we, we it's worthwhile. Yeah. Um, our art sales, interestingly, last year. The, the, Start the, with an order of magnitude sure. of what our normal art sales so, are. I will. So the year prior, that is 2019, we sold $416,000 worth of artwork over the course of the event. Um, and this year, we sold 58% of that. Yeah, so our sales were way down, but only 58% of the artists turned up. So if you look at, you, know, you never know, some people have a good year, some people have a bad year, like that changes always. But yeah, the average sales for artists that actually came and participated this year were exactly what they would normally be. Fascinating. <laughs> Fascinating. You know? <laughs> it, it's self, it kind of self-corrected, Charlie, you know? Right. So for the people whole. who are interested in seeing how it's evolving, should they uh, probably like the Facebook page and follow the Facebook, right? We want them to do all of the things. Yeah. And yeah. everybody knows what those things are. Right. We want you to like us on Facebook. <laughs> we want us, you to get on our email list. You want, want you to visit our, um, you, can go, you can do our Instagram. You mm. can, we have a whole YouTube channel with content you can go geek out on if you mm. want to. Um, and you can find all of that stuff at plenaireaston.com. Or again, if you're interested in the broader work of the Avalon Foundation, which again has had to pivot 1 million sure. ways. We built a whole new live music venue, an outdoor uh, pavilion. We, we actually opened a music venue during a pandemic to try to keep um, the community engaged in the arts. So if you're interested in our um, more comprehensive programming, that's certainly avalonfoundation.org. And you can like us and friend us and do it all. Do <laughs> all the things that people know how to do. It's out there too. All right, well, thank you guys so much for taking a few minutes to talk about this. I, I, I would love to get into the, as a event producer myself, I would love to find out some of the other stuff you've been doing, um, but maybe we'll chat again closer in. Um, I would love to hear about how the pavilion ends up doing because that's that we'll open it up just as winter was coming, right? Or just yeah, as, you know, we opened it in November, <laughs> um, and which you know was yeah seven weeks after the governor changed the rules so that you could have outdoor gatherings that were of any scale at all. Uh, right. so it came together very quickly, but yeah, um, so. It's done really well. You know, our live music shows, all but one of them sold out. Um, and of course, you know, the capacity is way less than it would normally be, but still, um, you know, we, we really built the whole thing around safety uh, right. and we're really happy with the, the outcome. We were hoping to have a, a, a kick butt kind of spring out there and um, just position ourselves well to be able to see all of our artist friends um, this summer. And we just hope everybody's, Hanging in there. You, you're hanging in there. We like we like you, Charlie, because we can always just check online and see how you're doing. Um, Charlie read us our our, our our Christmas Eve story yeah. by the fire. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that poor Carol Bird. Oh, Carol Bird did not end well for her. It did not end well. But thank you both so much for for chatting. Thank you, love. Thank you for having the fun. Stay in touch and hope to see you guys in July. Absolutely. Bye-bye.